somebody out in the house of God today. This beautiful day the Lord has made. Amen. Sun shining. It's good and warm. Don't you love it being good and warm? Now, you'll, you'll remember this about February. When you're fussing how cold it is. Snow's all over the place. And now somebody's going to... Huh? Amen. So thank God for the beautiful day, right? And you have a grand opportunity. You're in the house of God today. And you're at the table of God. And God has promised to feed us every time we come. Amen. And so uh, it's up to you to grab your fork and your napkin and your cup and go at it. Amen. Amen. That's right. And fill my cup, Lord. Fill it up. Amen. Come and cleanse this something. What is it? Thirsting of my soul. Amen. See, you're in the presence of God. See, that's what God promised. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I'll be in the very midst of them. So he's here. The question is, are you here? Amen. Amen. And so enjoy the things of God today. And it is so good to see smiling faces and uh, ready to worship God. We was talking about willing workers this morning in Sunday school. And that's what God wants, willing workers. People, you know, it doesn't have to be a big job, and a lot of us don't have big jobs. But whatever your job is, whatever God has given you to do, you're to do it uh, to the glory of God. Amen. In the church house, there's all kind of, there's big jobs and then there's little jobs. And there's a whole lot more little jobs than there is big jobs. It's just the big jobs get noticed more than the little jobs. Amen. Isn't that right? There's a lot of people that does a lot of work behind the scenes that most folks never, never know about. And they do it for the glory of God. And God blesses that. Amen. He's talking about Moses. God sent Moses' people to help him in building that tabernacle, didn't he? People with know-how, with willingness to work, and they got together and performed the work of God. That's what we are today as Christians, willing workers of God. And so we need to work, work, work till he comes. Amen. Well, we're going to sing this uh, good old song, Living uh, or Drinking. It's drinking. Drinking at the springs of living water. Let's stand together and sing this morning. Please stand. sin and shame and nothing satisfying there I found but to the blessed cross of Christ one day I came the springs of living water did abound drinking at the springs of living water happy now am I my soul is satisfied drinking springs of living water, oh wonderful and bountiful supply, how sweet the living water from the hills of God, it makes me glad and happy all the way, now glory, grace, and blessing mark the path I've trod, I'm shouting hallelujah every day. springs of living water. Happy now am I, my soul is satisfied, drinking at the springs of living water. Oh, 
let's go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray for the Cotton family today. Uh, Judy passed away la uh, last uh, yesterday evening, last night, I guess. So let's remember the Cotton family today in, in their prayers. And let's continue to pray for our folks that are sick and those still recovering from surgery. Good to see Sue here. Good to see Michelle here today. She's recovering from surgery. Probably facing more surgery coming up. They're going to sing for us today. So you pray for Michelle. Pray for Sharon Harmon. Pray for each other. Amen. Pray for our land in which we live. Our, our land needs prayer. Uh, our government needs prayer. You know, we can complain about it all we want to. But when's the last time we prayed for it? Amen. So let's pray for them. Ask for the intervention of God. Our only hope is God's intervention. Amen. Not Washington's intervention. God's intervention. That's where our hope is. That's where our help is. So today we pray for that. Pray for God's guidance and help in this day in which we live. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father God, which art in heaven, oh dear God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, your blessing upon us. And God, this opportunity to be in the house of God one more time. Thank you, God, for the protection this week. Lord, you've protected us all from this virus. And you've protected us, God, from the evilness in our world today. And Lord, you brought us back to a time of worship. And I thank you for these that are gathered in the house of God. Lord, watch over them, take care of them. For those that are listening at home this morning, I pray, Father, you'll fill them up today as well. Give them a blessing, God, there in their house, wherever they may be listening. Lord, help them. Lord, to feed at the table of God. Our only hope in this life is at the table of God. Father, you have promised us safe landing on the shores of, of glory land one of these days. But we know that somewhere along that way, the battle's going to get tough. The battle's going to get hard. But Father, because of your promise, no matter what happens here, you have promised us a place there. So, Father, we can say nothing but praise your name. And thank you, God, for that promise. Now, Lord, I pray for people today that don't seem to remember that promise. They're living in fear. They're living in dread. Father, I pray you'll help them today to realize that if they're a child of God, they don't have to fear. They don't have to dread the enemy, for they win this thing. You're the winner. And, Father, we praise your name for that. Help our people that are sick. Lord, bless them. Those that are fighting this virus, help them today. Those facing surgery, God, we pray for them. Those recovering here today, continue, Lord, to heal them. Help them, God, I pray. Pray for our nation, dear God. To be with our president and our governor, Lord, as they make decisions. And I pray for people that are out living for the devil. God, that you'll help them today. Lord, help them, give them wisdom to understand that Satan has no answers. But the answers lie within Christ Jesus. Lord, bless our families today that's lost their loved ones. Continue to pray for Brother Dave Grimmett and his family. We pray for uh, Judy Cotton's family today. That you'll comfort them, Lord, in the loss of their loved one. Father, forgive us, Lord, of our sin. Bless this service today. Bless Wayne and Michelle as he sang. And Father, we pray you'll bless the Word of God today. May it settle in the hearts of people. Father, we're in difficult ground, but precious ground. So, Lord, you help us today. Forgive us of our sin and our shortcomings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. All right. I've asked Wayne and Michelle uh, to come and sing today. Michelle is recovering from her surgery, and she's got more coming. So you be sure to keep Michelle in your prayers, and you pray for them as they sing.
How long since you prayed? How long since you stayed on your knees till the light shone through? How long has it been since your mind felt at ease? How long since your heart knew no burden? Can you call him your friend? How long has it been since you knew that he cared for you? it been since you knelt by your bed and prayed to the Lord up in heaven? How long since you knew that he'd answer you and would keep you the long night through? How long has it been since you woke with the dawn and felt that the day's worth the living. Can you call him your friend? How long has it been since you knew that he cared for you? Can you call him your friend? How long has it been since you knew that he cared for you? Okay, if everyone will please stand, we're going to sing Stepping in the Light. Please stand. Savior, trying to follow our Savior and King, shaping our lives by His blessed example. Happy, how happy the songs that we bring. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the 
sing another song for us. Uh, today, uh, don't forget your uh, tithes and offering, your building fund, all those things, of course, you put in the place in the back in the foyer area. Today's dollar for missions uh, offering uh, that you'll put back there uh, has, will be for Tom and Linda Milam. Now, Tom and Linda will be with us this evening, and uh, uh, she'll be singing for us, and Tom will be preaching. They'll tell you some about their ministry there in Fort Pierce, Florida, and uh, and so they'll be here, and so what we receive in dollar for missions, we'll give to them. To help them with that ministry, there's a lot of work that goes on down there, and, and uh, uh, they help missionaries all over the world with tracts and uh, uh, books, and, and, and to the missionaries on the field, it's to little to no cost to them. And so uh, uh, they do a great work, and, of course, they, they, do, they do other printed material as well. And but uh, uh, you pray for that ministry. And they'll be here. I hope you'll come back after a while and listen to them. And, and Brother Tom will preach for us as well. And I told you, how many of you tuned in to listen to the radio station? Did anybody, did anybody do that? Uh, did I tell you about it? Did I tell you? First of all, uh, they have a wonderful, wonderful radio station down there. I listen to it every morning on my little. You know, I got a little lady I talk to all the time. Her name is Alexa. And uh, uh, and uh, uh, and. Uh, and and she plays that radio. All you got to do, you, you you can't pick it up on the dial, but you can pick it up on the computer, or you can pick it up on the, if you have an Alexa app or or, or a Alexa little, little little box. You know what I'm talking about. You know, now I don't know about them things, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about. I believe that thing listens to me. And, and but anyway, uh, and so I don't trust her. But anyway, uh, however. It is uh, WBOFradio.com, or you can just tell Alexa to play WBOF Radio, and it'll take off a playing. And uh, it's very good. I would encourage it's good, good Christian music. And uh, so uh, that's their radio station. I stood in the radio station when I was down there, and I was amazed at how it was set up. So anyway, you come back and listen to them this evening. Wayne and Michelle's going to sing. How Jesus, all of my trials, I cannot bear my burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for His own. Peace. 
Peace be still. Hear his voice. Peace be you Wayne and Michelle. Wasn't that good? Amen. Thank you all for those beautiful songs this morning. Open your Bible with me today to the book of Revelation chapter number 10. Now I intended uh, when I started preaching this series of messages I did not intend to preach Revelation chapter 10. I did not intend to preach Revelation chapter 11. I intended to skip those two, and uh, but now that I've got hung in to this book of Revelation, I can't get out of it, and uh, uh, the Lord just won't let me out of it, and uh, because I believe that if we can understand Revelation, and by the way, it's very complicated to understand, and it's not for us to understand it in its entirety, because there's some things that we have to still speculate that is being said in the book of Revelation because we have no knowledge. Matter of fact, in chapter 10, you're going to find such a place that we have a lot of opinions, we have a lot of speculations, we have a lot of commentary that will come from these passages of Scripture, and I'm not going to debate you what you think because uh, you could be right and I could be wrong. But we pay attention to what the Word says. And in Revelation chapter 10, now we finished off last week, if you remember, um, we, we had talked about the second woe and the sixth trumpet. Now left is the third woe and the seventh trumpet, and the seventh trumpet then opens up the seven bowl judgments. Now there's a lot of speculation where at what point and exactly what time the great tribulation begins. I do not know the answer to that. But it is in this time frame here somewhere that the great tribulation begins. Some believe that it doesn't begin till the seventh trumpet. I don't believe that. I believe it starts before that. I believe it might begin with the woes. But nonetheless, we can't pinpoint for sure. Daniel would talk about that. But even in Daniel's prophecy, it's hard to pinpoint exact time frames. And we do know this, the tribulation period lasts seven years. But we do not know the exact time that it starts. Some people say it starts right after the rapture. No, it does not. There will be a time frame there sometime before the tribulation begins. Do not know how long. Maybe a long time. May just be a short time. But the actual tribulation period will last seven years. But it may be a few years before it ever starts. After the rapture. But we don't know that. We can, we can guess that. And, uh, but some things, if you study the Word of God, that must take place is going to take some time. Amen. To take place, uh, because we do know this, that in order for the great tribulation to even take place, the temple has to be rebuilt. Amen. And they will rebuild the temple in the place that it's supposed to be built. Amen. They're not going to build it on the outskirts of town. They're going to build it right where it's supposed to be built. Amen. So all of these things play into, have to come into play as we begin to think of these. I'm not here to give you time frames because I don't know them. If you know them, you share them with me. And then I'll probably debate you on that. But nonetheless, uh, uh, however, that is not the point that I'm wanting to get to you. Now what we have in chapter number 10 is we have another what we might call parenthesis or an interruption if you want to call it. In between, if you remember, and we didn't go into this, and I kind of wish I'd went into it now, but I didn't. We skipped chapter number seven, I believe it was. And in chapter number seven, we had a parenthesis. We had an interruption in between the sixth and the seventh seal. It was in that time frame that the mercy of God showed up and he sealed 144,000 Jews to preach the gospel to the Jewish nation and those that had never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, uh, and it's in that parenthesis 
before the seventh, uh, before the seventh seal was opened, that God would seal the 144,000. And they will preach the gospel. They will preach the kingdom of God, uh, mostly to the Jewish people, but I believe there'll be people that is on the earth that's never heard the gospel. That if they hear the gospel, they can be saved. Amen. Now, when we come between the sixth and seventh trumpet, we have another one of these parentheses, and this time you will find that John is going to be ushered back down to earth so he can see this phenomenon that's going to take place coming out of heaven and to come down upon the earth. Now, we see an angel. Now, I want to, first of all, I want us to read all 11 verses. And I'm just going to forewarn you ahead of time. I have a whole lot of stuff this morning. This is some, this is some deep stuff, Louise. It's deeper than me. Amen. You believe that? Well, I believe God gives us enough. God gives us enough to know all we need to know. Let's read chapter number 10. And I saw, and I want you to pay attention to the wording. Wording is very important here. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth, and when he crieth, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. You and I do not know what God said. You and I do not know what he told John because he told John, don't you write them down. It's only for you to know. Amen. We to this day, and boy, there's scholars trying to say what he said. They're wasting their time because they don't know. You see. Verse 5 in the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are in the earth and the things that therein are in the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he had declared to his servants the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go and take the little book which is upon, which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth, sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Heavenly Father, help us today, God. Lord, as we try to rightly divide the word of truth, Lord, help us get a people ready to leave this old world. Well, Father, this time that's coming upon this earth, no man, no man wants to be here. No man has to be here. For the blood of Jesus Christ can set them free. Lord, help us today to try to convey this to a lost and dying world. Help us, Lord, now I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I want to talk just a minute about this angel. We have the angel with the little book. Now I want you to pay attention to how the Bible describes this angel. 
The Bible describes this angel as another mighty angel. Now there's great scholars of our day will argue with you and say that this is Jesus. That Jesus himself has descended out of heaven and he puts his foot on the sea and his foot on the earth. I would tell you that is not the case. Because of the wording of the verse, it's another, listen, Jesus is not another mighty angel. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. They wouldn't say, well, there comes another one of them things. Uh Uh-uh. Hey, he's the king. Amen. And by the way, when you study the scripture, Jesus has not descended back to this earth since he ascended out. But he will. There's an appointed time when he will. He'll come at the end of the age to set up a millennial reign of Christ. That's when he'll come back to this earth. Till then, he's got his messengers. Amen. So what you have is a messenger of God descending out from the throne of God. Now, I've told you John's been escorted back to earth to see this phenomenon that's going to come out of heaven. Now, let's let's notice some things here that is said about this mighty angel. Number one, he is clothed in a cloud. Now, when you study clouds in the Bible, now, uh, they represent different things. First of all, a cloud represents judgment. A cloud represents the presence of God. And a cloud also represents the coming of Jesus. Amen. Now, I want you to use your Bible this morning and you go with me to some things that we'll see about the cloud. Go with me to Exodus chapter 19. If you've been with me in the study of Exodus, we've seen the cloud show up. And here in the book of Exodus, the cloud represents uh, the presence of God. And in Exodus chapter number 19 and verse 9 and uh, down through verse 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with thee. And believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. And let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all people upon Mount Sinai. You see here the cloud represented the presence of God. God showed up. The Shekinah glory of God showed up in the cloud. Moses, you prepare the people. For I'm going to come down amongst them. You see. Uh, back in Exodus chapter 13. Verse 21, I think it is. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. You see, God's presence was in that cloud. Amen. And God led them through the cloud. You, know, you come all the way over to the book of Acts, chapter number 1. We're gathered on a hillside. You know what's going to take place here, don't you? In Acts, chapter number 1, beginning verse number 8. If you've studied the book of Acts, you know what's happening. Beginning verse number 8 of Acts, chapter number 1. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and the other most parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Preacher, what does that mean? Matthew 24. Huh? What does that mean, preacher? I mean, he's coming back. Amen? 
Matthew 24 and verse number 30, he says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man come in clouds of heaven with power and great glory. <laughs> it represents the coming of Jesus Christ. Now this mighty angel is descending down to John, and John's beholding this mighty angel in that cloud, in that presence of God. And by the way, these mighty angels have been in the presence of God. Now, number two, we notice this. He had a rainbow upon his head. Amen. Now, people, the commentaries will argue you this is Christ because of these characteristics. But I'm going to tell you, these angels have them. Amen. They're God's messengers. They're representative of God Almighty. They operate in the presence of the King of Kings. He had a rainbow around his head. What does that rainbow represent? None other than the promise of God. Amen. Now, what's taking place, preacher, on this earth? What is getting ready to happen? What I believe is happening in chapter number 10 is, is, is at the same time that all these things are being destroyed and all this land's being destroyed and the wicked's dying and, uh, and people are dying left and right, God still has a promise for those that are watching for Him. Amen. So in between all of this, God sends a message to His people. Amen. I'm still here. I'm still watching over you. I've never left you. I've never went anywhere. Don't get all worked up worried about it. I believe God says the same thing to you and I today. In the midst of pandemic and evilness floating all over the world, you know what he says? Hello, I haven't went nowhere. I'm still here. You see, if you remember in the book of Genesis chapter 8, Nine, God sent that rainbow after the flood. The promise of God, you see, to never destroy this world again by water. You see, it was the promise of God. And so there was a rainbow around his head. Now, we, we were introduced to another rainbow uh, back in Revelation chapter number four. Flip back there just a minute. Revelation chapter number 4 and verse number 3. This is John's vision of the throne of God. And he that said was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. Number 3, this mighty angel, his face shone like the sun. You know why this angel's face shone like the sun? He'd been in the presence of God. Can I tell you, when you get into God's presence, you get to glowing. Amen. You ever seen people glowing? When they get in the presence of God and they meet God and they talk to God, this glow comes off of them. You see, this angel's been in the presence of of God Almighty. I want you to go with me to Exodus chapter 34. And by the way, that's where we're heading in Bible study. In case you want to know, uh, we're going to start in chapter 34 uh, this week. But Moses has now made his second trip upon the mount. Because of the corruption of the people and the fall of the people, Moses has got to go back and intercede for the people. And if you remember at the close of chapter 33, Moses said, God, can I see your glory? And God said, Moses, no man has ever seen my face and lived, but here's what I'll let you do. Bless God, hallelujah. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll hunker you down in the cleft of the rock and boy, I'll put my mighty big old hand right over you. And as I pass by, well, bless God. God, somebody say something. Hey, and as I pass by, I'll lift my hand and you can see my glory. Bless God, I'm glad when the glory of God steps in. Somebody say something. Somebody, bless God. Woo. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll shout the virus out of somebody. Amen. Yeah. What we need today, church, is Christian people to quit worrying about the virus and start shouting to God and praising God. Amen. Amen. 
I got to let some steam off. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm, uh, Exodus 34. I want you to look at this. Now, boys, this is as good as tater soup. I'm telling you. <laughs> Amen. Now, you look here. Exodus 34, beginning in verse 29. Bible says, and it came to pass. Now remember, Moses has already seen the glory of God. He got a peek at his hinder parts. Amen. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand when he came down from the mount that Moses was not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. Let me tell you what was happening to old Moses. He came off that mountain shining like a flashlight. Hey, he was a glowing. And the, hey, I guarantee you the children of Israel saw him coming down. There was a light like they'd never seen. Moses done not been in the presence of God. Amen. Uh huh. John the Revelator, when he got in the presence, remember? Revelation chapter 1, he began to shine. He began to glow. You see, <laughs> bless God, angels radiate the glory of God. You know why? They're in the presence of God. It's high time some of us started shining a little bit. Amen. Amen. Hey, you want to give something to a lost and dying world? You want to give something to a dark day? Get in the presence of God and shine the light of God. That'll do them more good than a vaccine. That'll do them more good than anything. It's a praying mama and a praying daddy that's not afraid to get in the presence of God Almighty. Woo, glory, hallelujah. I'm supposed to stay up here. Amen. That's what they told me. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> I got a long way to go. I'm too fat for this. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, we are to shine the glory of God. Amen. Can we tell you something? Being a child of God ought to do something to you. Huh? We ain't saved to be a thug. We ain't saved to be a rug. Amen. We're saved to shine a light. And what better day to shine a light when it's so dark? Amen. Okay. Number four. You have feet of fire. Now, what's that, preacher? Well, you know this all started because God has a take-back plan. Man lost dominion of the world and Satan took over. Now God's going to take it back. That's what the little book's all about. You see, God plans to take control of the earth. And so we come... Uh, we, we see the contents. By the way, this little book, it mentions in verse number two, it doesn't tell us what the contents are. But you notice what it does say about this little book? When we saw that little book before, it was sealed up. What does it say about it now? It's open. You see, Christ came and, and he opened up the book. And now out pours these judgments. This book represents the title deed to this world. He's going to take it back. Now it's opened up, you see. Now, notice the angel descends out of heaven. He puts one foot on the sea and one foot on the earth. wonder what that represents. I'll tell you what it represents. It represents God's complete control of the seas and the land. Amen. He controls the water. He controls the land. In other words, he owns it all. Amen. Everything, everything upon this earth belongs to God. It's not yours. It belongs to God. He owns it all. The whole earth is the Lord. Psalm 24. I want you to look at Psalm 24 with me just a moment. 
We're going to do a lot of scripture today. Uh, that's why I brought my little book here. Psalm 24. I can carry it around. Psalm 24 and verse number 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein, it all belongs to God. Amen. Amen. Land and sea, it's his. Verse number 3 would tell us that the angel will speak as God would speak. Now, his voice, notice verse 3 again. And cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now this angel speaks under the controlling hand of God. The voice of this angel will demand immediate attention. You see, it's no accident that it tells us it will read as a lion's roar. You know, you, you, know, you know what's different about a lion's roar? There's no other roar like it in the forest. There's nothing else can make that noise. And when it sounds, it's heard all over. Everything in that area knows who just made a sound. Amen. And so they know that this is the voice coming from the throne of God. There's no other voice like it. You see, when God speaks to us, there's no voice like it anywhere else. Satan cannot imitate it. The world cannot sound it. There is no voice like the voice of God. And so he will roar. The Bible says, when the angel thunders his voice, seven thunders utter their voices. The seven thunders here represents the voice of God. When that angel thunders, then God himself thunders. Amen? God himself will thunder out. And this, these seven thunders, is what's directed towards John. Now, John recently been instructed to write everything he saw and write everything he heard. That's why you and I have the book of Revelation today. Because John was instructed to write. You see, God will speak again. And in verse number four, and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, he said. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, uh-uh, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. God now instructs John, that's for you only. Now you and I don't know what they said. We could try to guess, but that's all we'd be doing. And it's not for us to know. Will God reveal that to us one of these days? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Amen. He's given me enough to know what I got to do. Amen. Maybe he will. Maybe you're not. To the nosy rosy in the crowd, that'll kill you. Amen. Oh, God, tell me what you told John. Hmm. Whatever it is, John will be the only one that knows it. Maybe we can ask him when we get to heaven. He might tell us, ain't none of your business. Amen. Right. Can I tell you, uh, Daniel and Paul both received similar experiences. You remember? Daniel was told not to write. Paul said he was caught up into the third heaven and saw things that he couldn't utter. Remember? Saw things he wasn't allowed to talk about. He was not allowed to utter them to us. Only he knows what it was. Now, verse 5 and 6 now. This mighty angel takes an oath. Look at it says, verse 5. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth. Notice what he does. Lift his, his hand toward heaven. Look what he's doing. Verse number 6. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever. Who's that? That's Christ himself. God himself. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven 
and the things that are therein, and the earth, and the things that are therein, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. Now, the angel makes an oath. He makes an oath to God. The angel, by the way, this is another proof the angel cannot be Christ because Christ will not make an oath by God because he is God. Amen? Now, if you're a Jehovah Witness, you didn't like that statement. Amen? But he is God. So he wouldn't make an oath by himself. The thought of time no longer. This is what that thought means. It doesn't mean time has ended. It hasn't ended yet. But what it means, there's no more delay in time. There's no more delay. This thing going to kick in gear real fast. But there's going to be no more delay. Following this one, there will be no more delay in the coming wrath of God. You see, they're getting ready to sound the seventh trumpet. And by the way, as I told you, and you see it here, the seventh trumpet down here at the bottom opens the bowls of God's wrath. We're not finished yet. You see. And by the way, they get worse the farther they go. Can you imagine getting worse? Hmm. They're getting ready to sound that seventh trumpet. And then we'll finish out the last half of this great tribulation period. Uh, verse 7. With the blowing of the seventh trumpet, the mystery of God will be complete. It says, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. As he hath declared to the servants and the prophets, with the blowing of this seventh trumpet, the mystery of God will be complete. All mysteries that God has had through all the ages from the prophets to today will be finished. There'll be no more mystery, you see. You know, Paul talked about mysteries, something that's yet to be revealed, you see. And the mysteries will have come to an end. Paul talks about mysteries. Turn over with me to 2 Thessalonians for just a moment. Look at 2 Thessalonians. Paul speaking of this day. In 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. We could read a whole lot, but I just want to read verse number 7. The Bible says, verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. You see, Paul's talking about a time. Right now, can I tell you, can I tell you what keeps Satan from destroying everything we got today? Satan would love nothing more than destroy this church, strike his preacher dead at four o'clock. You know why he can't? Hey, somebody in his way. Amen. There's somebody in his way. You see, that's the mystery of God. One of these days, that protecting hand of God's going to lift. Now, this preacher ain't going to be here. Amen. Or I'm going out of here with him. When he lifts his hand, he takes us with him. Amen. So keep that in mind. It's worth being saved just for that. Amen. Hello? Why would God allow such things to happen to his people? Think of all the things that's taken place from, from, the, from the beginning. The fall of man, the damage of sin has caused, uh, people suffering and disease, and, and then, then when we leave here, the reign of the Antichrist and all these things. Why would God allow this to happen? All this, can I tell you, these mysteries. And we ask a lot of why questions, don't we? But I believe all the mysteries will be one day revealed to us. Why did, why did this one have to go through that? Why did this one suffer the loss? 
Why did this one suffer cancer? I don't have the answer to that. It's a mystery to me. I see things happen to good people that I scratch my head sometimes and say, Lord, what's going on? I know some other people you could have gave that to. Amen? But God will reveal to us why. God never does anything at a whim, folks. He has a reason. I've got to hurry. I know. I'm trying. Help me. Now, verse number 8. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. Now notice what's happening here. John now is going to become a doer of the word and not just a hearer. He's been, a, he's been watching all this time. Now he's going to participate. Amen. He says, getting ready to participate. Notice what he's told to do. He says, John, you go to that angel and you ask of that angel that little book. Go get that little book, John. Verse number 9. By the way, we must do the same today. We've got to quit being spectators. We've got to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Amen. Verse number 9. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it. And eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Now John goes, he gets the little book, but God tells him, guess what he says? Eat that little book. Now, what's, what's, what's going on here? Well, to eat it up simply means to make it part of you. Amen? John, you make this part of you. By the way, you and I are to be eating this book up. We are to be making it part of us. Every day. I mean, you ought to have a time when you eat in God's book. It ought to become a part of you. You see, listen, John is now going to become more than a hearer. He's a doer now. By the way, he's not the only one that was told to eat the scrolls. You remember? Ezekiel was told. Jeremiah was told to eat these words. Now, there's two things going to happen, he told him, when you eat this book. One, it's going to be sweet as honey in your mouth. Can I tell you what? That's exactly what the Word of God is. Isn't it? It is sweet as honey to us. It is sweet as honey to the child of God. Amen. Psalm 119. In verse 103, here's what the Bible says here. Psalm 119, verse 103. Let me read that to you. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. In a time as such we live, and we see the anger and the bitterness in a world around us, isn't it good to have a sweet taste of God's Word? Isn't it good to have the sweetness that God has given unto us? But now, what about the bitter part? He said, John, it'll be sweet to thy taste, but it'll be bitter in thy belly. The bitterness that he's talking about is the judgment of God. Can I tell you, it almost makes me sick to know that there's people bound and determined to go to hell. Amen? When they don't have to. They're bound and determined to live for the devil. They're bound and determined to face this tribulation period. It ought to make us sick to know that people are voluntarily going to face the judgment of God. Let's finish it up today. Verse number 10. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. 
Verse 11. John's give a command now. Here's what you got to do, John. John, verse 11. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Can I tell you, John's message today was to be worldwide. To everyone from the least to the greatest. Can I tell you, John's message is still being preached today. It's for the poorest, for the richest. It's for the one that's homeless or the one living in the castle. Amen. John's message is still being preached today. You and I need to become a part of the work of God. Our hearts are to ache. It worries me today that many people today has lost their burden to see lost people saved. We don't see weeping like we used to see. We don't see hearts burden anymore to know that people are going to go to hell. Today, while we've been in here these, uh, uh, whatever time we've been here, if you've gotten Sunday school, you've been here two hours. There's been a lot of people that's entered eternity. They've either entered heaven or they've entered hell. There's no purgatory. Don't get caught up in purgatory. Don't get caught up in a waiting station where you can make things right with God. You're in it now. Amen. It's either now or it's never. And today could be it, folks. This could be the end. We might not see this building again. If you're a child of God. Amen. Let's get it right with God. And let's get a hold of lost people. Amen. Father, thank you, God, for this time. Thank you, God, for helping us this morning. Lord, these are difficult steps. But God, you're good. And Lord, you help us so many ways. Lord, bless this invitation time. If somebody's here today not sure they're saved, I pray they'll be saved. Maybe somebody's here burdened for somebody, their loved one, their family, children, friends, parents. Oh, God, save our lost people. Lord, somewhere, reach them with that ever-changing gospel of Christ. Bless our time now, Lord. Help us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Heads remain bowed, eyes closed, people praying. I don't know where you are today. If you're saved, you should know you're saved. If you're here and you say, preacher, I'm not for sure I'm saved. Well, odds are you're not. And you need to get that right with God. Now, if you're here and you say, I know I'm saved, how many in this room would just by the lift of their hand say, I know somebody that's not saved? Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. You commit whoever that is to Almighty God. Get a burden in your heart for that person that the gospel will reach them and they'll be saved. You know, our eyes today are to fill with tears For our loved ones today. We can so easily get caught up in the problems of our world, and there's many of them. We could easily get caught up in the media and the anger and forget to pray. I say lay all that aside, it'll take care of itself. 
And let's get people ready to get out of here. Because we're leaving here. The trump of God is going to sound at any time. And we're out of here. The born again child of God is out of here. Committed to prayer. As she plays this morning, you pray. If you want to come to the altar, you come. If you want to pray in your seat, you pray. But let's commit it to prayer today. Chart in heaven. Oh God, we thank you, Lord, for helping us today. God, we lay our burdens at Jesus' feet. Lord, many a prayers went up for a soul today. And dear God, I pray you'll reach that soul today for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, touch their heart. Father, they might be saved. Father, we cry like John the Revelator, even so, come Lord Jesus. But God, at the same time, we ask if you could just hold on a little time. we got people, Lord, it's lost. And Lord, we've been begging and praying. So Lord, we're looking for that day. They'll be saved. we got people that's went astray. People not walking the way they should walk. And dear God, we beg for them. God, extend grace. Lord, bring him to the knowledge of Christ. Help us, God, to keep proclaiming the word of God in a day that's hard to do so. God, help us. We become weak, we become frail, we become tired. But God, you can, you can lift that. So Lord, we ask for your help today. Thank you, God, for being with us and helping us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me give you some things before, I, before we dismiss. Uh, the Arise Conference starts tomorrow. Tomorrow evening, 5, uh, five o'clock, right? That's the right time. Registration, 430 to 5. It, there's a sign-up sheet. If you're not on the sign-up sheet, you can come. It just helps us know a number because we're going to have some food, some games, and then we'll be gathering in the sanctuary at 645, and we'll be bringing them in live stream, playing some games with them by the, by the way of live stream. And then we have a service. I know Ralph Sexton's going to be preaching, uh, Heath Williams, C.T. Townsend, uh, several of those men will be preaching. And uh, so you, you uh, young men and women, you need to be part of that. Uh, it's virtual this year, but we're going to have some games ourselves and some food. Do we need we need any help with anything? Food? We're good? Okay. All righty. Also, we are taking part in Amy's House of Hope uh, next month on August the 16th. Now, they're doing things a little different. They can't, you can't have but so many go down there. 
the people do not come in the building, if I'm understanding that correctly. They serve them out. They serve them through the door. So we have to make prepackaged stuff to take down there. So uh, Tanya is organizing that together. On the 16th, that's a Sunday, uh, what time are you gathering here? 3 o'clock. We need as many hands that can come at 3 o'clock to help us pack it up and make, make whatever we're making and uh, uh, to come and help us pack it up. And then I think you can take four or five down there to help hand it out. There's a sign-up sheet by my office of things you need, right, and a place for workers, right. So sign up for that to help that that is a good cause and a good thing down here at Amy's house. I hope our day is August the 16th. So keep that in mind and sign up and help us with that as well. And uh, it is our plan, you may have read it in the bulletin, uh, starting the first Sunday in August to start spanning out some of the Sunday school classes. We'll do the adult classes, that is Brenda's class and Travis's class. We'll, we'll branch out into their, back into their own Sunday school class and the teen teens. Am I correct in saying that? The teens, uh, you will be branching out into your Sunday school class. And that's all we're going to do for now. And then so we're taking it a step at a time. And uh, so uh, come to Sunday school, okay? And uh, bring those little ones in the sanctuary. And uh, it's all right. You know, they say, well, they're noisy. Well, I know that. I'm noisy too. So, amen. Ain't we all noisy? Huh? Bring them. Don't use your children's excuse not to come. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Yes? Okay. Well, anyway, uh, you come back to church tonight, okay? Now, tonight we've got Tom and Linda Milo. Now, some of y'all may know Tom and Linda if you've been part of camp meeting. They've been to camp meeting. They're very faithful. They have all the books back there. And, uh, and Tom is an evangelist, and they work out of that uh, printing ministry of theirs. So I would encourage you to come and encourage them. Our dollar for missions is for them today, so help them out. Uh, they just bought a, uh, okay, okay, I just remembered. Thank you. Uh, they bought a brand new machine. Let me tell you about it. And so they need some help to finish paying for that. And so, uh, so you help them that. Okay, the Zoom meeting, that was what that was about, right? The Zoom meeting this week, there'll be no Zoom meeting because of, of things going on with Arise and all that stuff. So I would encourage you to be part of the rest of Zoom meetings. I keep telling you that. They're very good. And uh, won't be one this week, though. And uh, so we'll give you information on the next one, okay? And then the next week is VBS. So you may not have one that week either. So, But we'll get to that next week, okay? But anyway, thank you for being here today. Sorry if the preacher was a little long. Told you I had a long way to go. I hope. Here's my hope with the book of Revelation. That I don't confuse you. I hope it helps you. It is a very hard book to study. Hard book to preach. But it is real. Amen. And so I hope it helps you uh, in your walk with Christ. Amen. All righty. Well, all hearts and minds clear? Let's then be dismissed. Our Father, we're thankful, God, again, that you've given us another day in the house of God. Thank you, Lord, for this good group of people that's in the house today. Father, I pray now you'll give them safety as they go home. Protect them, God, out there and with all these things going around. And For those that's listening by the way of live stream, we thank you for them. Lord, bless them in their home as well. Bring us back here, dear God, after a while uh, to uh, listen to more of the Word of God, to help our missionaries. And, Father, you just, you just bless what we endeavor to do this evening. Give us a good afternoon of rest and relaxation. Bring us back to the house of God this evening. We love you and th thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
so undeserved it's hard for me to understand God's son would give this invitation this wondrous revelation whosoever 